There's also secondary succession. Now, secondary succession is a little bit different, but it's based on the same concept. Life finding a way to return to the, from, to the climax community. And this happens when, for example, forest fires happen, or when massive habitat destruction takes place, or anything like that. So after the fire, all the dead stuff falls to the ground and becomes nutrients. So it's not the same thing as the primary succession where there was no soil and no nutrients. There's still soil, there's still nutrients. But you're going to have to go through the same kind of process where you're going to start with the pioneer species and you're going to get the annual plants and then you're going to get grasses and perennial plants uh, and then you're going to get shrubs and larger trees and, and then if, before you know it, you go back to the climax community. This is a process that can take many years to happen, but in fact, as you can see in the pictures, it doesn't take necessarily that long uh, for you to go from the picture on the left side to the right side of here. And this is actually important for ecosystems because climax communities get old and the plants run out of nutrients basically sometimes. And so forest fires are part, part of what resets basically the ecosystem. So, you know, I don't know if you ever use a computer and you saw that after using it for a while, it gets slow and then you have to restart it. If you have a PC, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have a Mac, probably not. But either way, if you have a PC, that's what happens sometimes. And it's kind of how it is in an ecosystem. Things start to slow down as there's too much life and too little nutrients to support that life. When things die during the fire, you restart, and then it gives opportunity for new life to take, its, take the place and new life to evolve as new niches become available and new kinds of variety can actually exist. So even large disturbances, such as those that create secondary succession, can be beneficial for life in the long run, even though in the short run it's catastrophic. Now here you see an example of the amount of nutrients in the soil as succession goes along. And then I talked about that, the, the graph on the top left side will show you that as succession is happening, more and more nutrients are accumulating in the, in the soil. But remember that once the climax community is established, those nutrients will kind of start to be depleted uh, unless, of course, uh, leaves are constantly falling and trees are constantly dying and adding more nutrients to that area. But as an ecosystem as a whole, eventually it, it could run out of that. And that's why it's important for secondary succession to happen and restart the, the system. But doing primary succession, you see how uh, as more and more things live and die in that place, the nutrients kind of gather as decomposers do their trick. On the bottom here left, you see an example of a succession that happened and after a glacier retreated. They, the place used to be covered with ice, but after the uh, the ice retreated on the, on the glacier bay, it was possible for the life to take hold. And so you see the pioneer stage with those uh, annual and, and then finally perennial sp uh, species and little grass, and then you see the more shrubs, smaller trees, and then a the climax community at the very end. So you see these are examples of real succession that's happening. And it doesn't have to be a fire, and it doesn't have to be a volcanic eruption, it could be a, a new ecosystem that opened up. And we'll talk more about that at the end when we talk about the uh, eco uh, habitat destruction and the opposite, which is when humans leave and how succession comes back. Succession also happens in the water. When a whale dies and its carcass falls to the bottom of the ocean, you'd be surprised what happens. Life suddenly teems at the bottom of the benthic zone as new crawlers come by and live off of that for a very long time. And so that's an example of, of succession in a way because new life gets to start based on that. So. Water succession is a little bit different, but also the same kind of concept applies sometimes. And this could also happen in other ecosystems of the ocean, like coral reefs uh, and things like that. So coming off the example of the whale, you should then understand that there's two ways of thinking about secondary succession. It's either the ecosystem recovering after a massive disturbance where it kind of has to reset, or a new life sprouting from life that just ended. Both are kind of like the same thing. Life starting from the demise of pre-existing life. But in both cases, you have something to begin with. You have soil, you have nutrients already in place. So it's going to be different from primary succession when you start from bare rock with no life there at all and life has to conquer that new space. It's more like life has to restart or has to reboot or has to grow based on life that just came. And the example of the whale is common on land as well. Of that kind of succession. For example, when a tree falls in a forest and all of a sudden you have this gap in a forest canopy, light from the sun will start hitting the bottom of the forest, the understory, and all of a sudden these plants are going to start to grow to fight for that new light that's all of a sudden sprouting and they will go through periods of succession when tiny little plants will grow and then larger plants and larger plants and eventually a tall plant will grow to replace the plant that died in a process that will take years, but yes, eventually the clearing will be patched up. That's also, in a way, succession. 
Also, remember the idea of lakes, which go through processes from a lake that's, you know, clean lake, oligotrophic, all the way to an eutrophic lake, when it starts with barely no life there and eventually becomes teeming with life in a climax community that's so overcome with life that it actually ends up killing the lake. These are all examples of succession, or life changing as communities replace each other and evolve over time from, from prior near species all the way to the climax community, which are the most complex communities that include a lot of interactions between a lot of different kinds of populations. Even the carcass of a mice, when it decomposes a routine with life, a new life will take advantage of that to start. All of these things are succession. Succession is the process by which life goes through processes of changes in community and successively more complex as the ecosystem becomes more rich in nutrients and able to cope with the larger community uh, living in that space. But primary means that there was no life there to begin with. Secondary is when it starts from pre-existing life or the demise of the life that was in that location before. Um, now, the last thing I want to talk about is the idea that human disturbances, of course, destroy ecosystems around the Earth. But the interesting thing is that if we leave and leave the ecosystems by themselves, uh, life finds a way back. And you can see it now in Chernobyl, after the nuclear, nuclear accident that happened there and the city was abandoned, uh, life pretty much took over the city. You can see how a forest is now growing all over the place in the city, in between the buildings. Uh, other abandoned cities and abandoned mines that you see in the bottom there, uh, you see the life returning after only five years. Chernobyl has been a long time, but in the bottom you see more recent succession events. But this means that uh, life can recover from all kinds of destruction, and that's why it might not be the same life that was there originally, but uh, it will be new life. And so succession is about how life rebuilds itself or builds itself in the first place. But remember, this is not happening from nowhere. It's happening from pre-existing life that's coming from somewhere else. And although it does open up niches uh, for a new life to evolve in these circumstances, since there's no one occupying those niches. Uh, so evolution can take place and often does take place during succession. So it's also important for the variety of life across time. And remember that as ecosystems change and go uh, because of uh, environmental changes that happen, similar processes happen where new ecosystems take over or they change. And that whole ecotone thing that I, I, I talk, talked about, that um, it's not really succession, but it's a transition that happens between one ecosystem and the other as, as a global climate change or local climate change happens and the ecosystem is forced to change. But regardless of what, what you, the way you look at it, life finds a way and changes. And that is ecosystem ecology. I hope you learn a lot and don't do anything that wouldn't make you more proud.